Okay, Mac, let's just talk about CJ returning from this side of the court, because I'm not going to lie. In this particular match that B. Long and I balled out, um, we uh, were able to uh, score a decent amount of points with CJ over on the left side returning. So um, I'm looking to serve wide here. It's always necessary, right? Stacking, I'm serving wide. Look at the, look at the serve location, right? Get that sucker out there. I'm gonna hold middle. K Mac, tell us. So <clears throat> why why is it? I mean, and Deckel and I this year have been kind of working on the same thing. Uh, if I'm uh, if I'm on the right and B Long is on the left and we're and we're stacking here, I'm serving on the left. Sorry, and I pull CJ out of position. Why is it necessary for me to be taking that forehand in the middle? I guess if if it comes to my outside foot. Obviously, if it comes to my inside foot, we all know that Brendan's gonna take that. Um, but why is it a good idea for me to be taking that forehand? Well, I think, you know, court positioning and also strengths and weaknesses. I think of the two pairings, I think you guys would prefer with doing that shake in the bake, you to be using your Ferrari forehand and Long to be using his big frame as the poacher. Um, if you were to kind of slide out too far to cover your, your area, then Long will be driving, but now it's gonna be your backhand in the middle. So it allows it to be your forehand, which is probably the better drive of the two of you, but also uh, Brendan's forehand in the middle where he can cover a lot more territory, be much more dangerous as the approacher in that in that setting. Yep, and I'm, I'm kind of daring <clears throat> CJ to go line on the return. <clears throat> as I served there, I'm, I'm cheating, I'm staying middle. Um, if, if he wants to go line, that's fine. I can, I can totally get there. But as we see there, uh, goes to my outside foot, which is my right foot. I'm banging, find that hip. B long comes in to close and clean house. And the man is pumped. And one other thing, Tyson, I was just going to point yep. out, um, as long as volleying, right? He's in that quick, uh, fast hand battle. You don't rush up and fill in the hole, right? You're waiting. You're kind of in that modified eye formation, waiting for the point to slow down. You can fill into either side if you need to. But if you go up right next to Brendan here and crowd him, he doesn't feel as though he'll have the same level of free reign. He'll second guess which ball's his. And so I think it makes sense when your partner's disconnecting and you know baking off your shake to hang back. If the point slows down, then you can fill in. But while it's fast, it makes sense to just hang back and kind of get a read on the play. You know, uh, back in the day, uh, Kyle Yates and Ben Johns used to use this time and time again. And now we see CJ and Ben kind of use the same thing where CJ will drop. He'll kind of take his sweet time coming in with that methodical approach. Ben will be lurking middle like a like a shark, and it dares them to go back at CJ. Obviously, in in this scenario, uh, I was kind of more stacked up in I formation. But um, you know, if I was on the right, similar similar idea. I could be dropping cross court. I can take my sweet time coming in, kind of bait CJ to come at me. Uh, if he were to pop up a fourth or a sixth or an eighth too high, uh, Brendan can come over and poach with his forehand. <clears throat> Yeah, kind of debunk some myth that, you know, I know when I got into pickleball, they always said you have to be approaching the kitchen, you know, with your partner and kind of always in tandem. And there's situations where, where that doesn't make sense. Clearly, this is one of them. Let's see here. B. Long and I are, are cruising. 10-1. Serve wide. Bang again. Get my ass down. Okay. Got ourselves a nice little dinking point here. All right, all right, let's, let's go back to that real quick. So moving the ball around here, um, you know, something I need to work on in which uh, I probably have hit this shot two or three times in my life is B-Long hits this nice little, nice little knifing dink. Deckel has got his tip down. K-Mac, when that tip is down, uh, what direction do we see that player dinking? Straight ahead, okay? Anytime yeah, I see ahead, that, right I need to do of what off of that stinking ball, dang it? Jump that kitchen and show Jump some that athleticism. Kitchen, baby. Get moving. Okay, so CJ pulls, right? <laughs> CJ pulls me wide, I'm not gonna lie. Deckel wasn't, wasn't covering line. Um, I, I saw a little bait alley. Yes, that is toughest play in the book and low percentage. But um, since Deckel wasn't putting his chest on the ball, I'm gonna test him, see if there's something there to work with, and there definitely was. Game one, long and I. Well, I think it's, it's important too. I, I think that's a good attack. You didn't hit the, 
the daylights out of it. You didn't try to go through triple deck, right? Which often doesn't work out. You recognize that he was a little bit late to shift. You didn't try to hit a winner. But if you're able to stretch him for the volley, you're going to get a weak response. In that instance, the weak response was the volley didn't clear the net. But a lot of times the weak response will be that volley will sit up to where you can be more aggressive or maybe put the next one away. Yeah, and K-Mac, tell me, um, what what type of pace, let's say on a scale of, you know, uh, one to 100, what, what percentage of pace do players usually take their speed up up the line? I say players usually hit it about, you know, 85, 90%, you know, somewhere in that range. And I would say once we get in more of that 60%, 70%, that's probably more of the pace that we need to realistically have that ball go in. When we start hitting it too hard, it's just not easy to keep the ball in the court. Right. So, so if I was speeding middle, if I was speeding through deck, or if I was speeding at that right hip of his, um, just like what K match had mentioned there, I'm probably going to shoot for like 70 to 90% as far as pace. But when I'm guiding and directing that speed up line, uh, I'm really taking pace off, uh, thinking good location, uh, off pace, well placed, and I'm looking for a clean up ball from there. Uh, K Mac, as we know, if Deckel doesn't, uh, let's say if Deckel, you know, makes somewhat clean contact, but he's not early with that counter, where should I be sitting with my recounter? Most counters come in a straight line. So wherever you speed it up, you want to stay in the same location. Even if it is, you know, you're making an educated guess and you're not coming back to your normal ready position, more often than not, the ball will come right back to the same spot. So you want to be waiting in the same position. Like that. Now, take a look here. You know, if I was to take this ball middle, um, that'd, be a, that'd be a good time for Brendan to slide with me. Brendan can be recountering with his forehand. But if I go at Deckel's inside hip or maybe Deckel's belly button, I'm looking to speed forehand. And then it's coming right back to my inside foot. So I'm going to sit backhand. The old speed forehand and then clean backhand. 